Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, disturbing garbage, uh, I'm going to be talking about Endless Night by Richard Lehman. So, why disturbing garbage? Well, firstly, because uh, I'm, I'm filming this video as part of my ongoing Disturbing Books project. So, this was a book I didn't actually have on my Disturbing Books list. Um, it was a book I had anyway, um, and I picked it up to read for Garb August 1.5, the, the trashy book reading event that I ran uh, this last weekend. Um, and it occurred to me that actually a number of people have mentioned in the comments that they thought this was a disturbing book, and certainly Richard Lehman's most disturbing book. Um, so I thought I would include it in this uh, in this disturbing books thread, um, because having read it, it is, <laughs> it is quite disturbing. Um, but it's also definitely a trashy book, so it, it falls fulfilled um, both criteria for me. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about who Richard Lehman is before I before I talk about the book. Um, so I have done videos on Richard Lehman before um, and you can you can look through the channel and, and see, find those if you want to. So Lehman is an author who was really big uh, in like the 80s in particular, uh, so kind of 80s and early 90s, um, and someone who um, for some reason, and I can't remember if I ever quite found out why this was, he was really big in the new, in the UK. So his books were, you know, you would often see them on the shelves of bookstores in the UK. Um, and I started reading him when I was in my teens um, as, as a result of that, because he was just, you know, his books were just everywhere. I think in the States, you could, you know, you could certainly get them, but there were a lot more um, other authors that you could read in a similar vein, whereas in the UK, Lehman was the main the main person who was writing the kind of books that he writes. And the kind of books he writes are books that at the time were termed splatterpunk. So um, kind of fast paced, very gory, um, very graphic kind of horror thrillers um, that were a bit over the top and, and often have, certainly in Lehman's case, his books often kind of have a bit of a movie vibe to them. So they often feel like, like B-movies in novel form. Um, they've got that kind of trashiness um, that you would associate with a you know, like a low budget horror movie. The other thing I would say about the the UK um, editions of his books is they have fantastic covers. So uh, I don't know if you can see that. Is the camera going to focus on it for me? Yeah. So an artist called Steve Crisp did the covers for these headline editions of um, of Layman's books, and they are um, almost all really excellent. I think that's a fantastic one. Um, it's really creepy and it really captures the spirit of the book as well. Um, so this one came out in 1993. Um, I don't think I read it um, back in the day, um, but I've, I bought a copy of it fairly recently and I've, I've read it this weekend as part of, of Garb August 1.5. Um, and I had a, I'm not sure how I'll say I had a good time with it, but it kept me reading. Um, so let me tell you what it's about. So it's about a, um, it, and, and it starts um, incredibly strongly, it, it, like it grips you right from the beginning. So it starts with the this girl called Jody, who's the heroine, and a friend of hers having a sleepover at the friend's house, and there's a home invasion, and the, her friend gets killed, her friend's parents get killed, um, and Jody is left trying to rescue um, her friend's younger uh, younger brother, who's twelve. Jody should be said is sixteen, and and that's one of the things about the book that is quite disturbing is the way she is treated as a character given her age. Um, so the the rest of the book basically is is Jody and um, Andy, who's the brother, um, on the run, um, trying to escape the um, the home invasion people, and it kind of gradually develops from there. But one of them in particular develops an obsession with Jody, and it's about him trying to get her. Um, so it is, it is really fast paced and it's told in kind of an interesting way. So the start of the book um, is written in the third person and it read to me like what I imagine a Christopher Pike book is like. So I've never read any of the like point horror books, um, having been a bit old when they, when they came out. But it's got kind of almost a YA feel to it in that you've got this teenage girl who's, who's the main character. There is some violence, but it's not particularly graphic. Um, and, you know, it's just really fast paced and, and quite, you know, kind of quite light and cinematic, um, which for me feels quite YA. And, and as I say, that's kind of what I imagine the point horror books to be like. Um, 
but then you find that the um, there's a there's a second narrator in the book. So as well as the third person sections, you start getting these sections that are written in the first person from the perspective of of Simon, who's the the member of this like home invasion gang who's out to get Jody. Um, so yeah, those parts are written in in the first person, and the book flip flops between the two styles as it progresses. And those sections are incredibly disturbing. So both in terms of the the content, um, so you know, uh, you know, multiple descriptions of, of rape and murder, basically, um, but also just Simon's complete um, lack of any moral compass at all. You know, all he is all he is out to do is gratify himself, um, and he has no concern for you know for, for anybody else. Um, and it's quite his his kind of emptiness is quite chilling. And and as the book progresses, you find that he and this this gang that he's part of have been doing this since they were teenagers themselves. Um, and yeah, this just this kind of leering nastiness to to you know his the the way he describes events, um, which is quite unsettling and, and horrible. What I would say is that that leering nastiness is a trait of, of Richard Lehman's books. So I said earlier on that Lehman's books often feel like you know, horror B movies from the 80s. And if you think of horror B movies from the 80s, uh, you know, female actresses without many clothes on were, were definitely a part of that, you know, kind of whole vibe. Um, and that's something that is, you know, a, a, an unwavering obsession of Lehman's is to describe the um you know the physical attributes of the female characters in his book books and to put them into situations where they you know lose their clothing basically um and that is something that is you know it, as is true in this book as in any of his others um and bear in mind that the heroine of this book who this stuff is happening to is 16 years old so there's something quite unpleasant about that above and beyond the unpleasantness of um you know of Simon as a character and it and it does feel like Layman just had this obsession um, which just gets played out again and again and again in his books. It's almost like um, you know there are there are certainly um, artists who are considered to be you know great artists who who that is true for as well. So you think of someone like Dario Argento the Italian film director um, you know that's something that you know it's, it's a a trait that happens in his films a lot as well or you know Hitchcock even or, or um, Brian De Palma um, you know this this women in peril um, trope is one that you know all of those all of those male creators um, you know felt you know were, were obsessed with and, and played out again and again and again the difference with Lehman is he's nowhere near as talented as, as any of those three people um, so yeah, it does feel quite unsavoury um, at times. Um, there is a quote on the back of the book um, which felt quite fitting actually, um, which discusses. So you know, there's a bunch of reviews on the back anyway. And there's one from Fear, which was a, uh, a British horror horror magazine, um, and which says Layman's biggest strength is that he's able to provide light-hearted fun and disturb at the same time. And I think that's broadly true, um, in that there, there there's always some entertainment value in his novels and they tend to be really fast paced you know there's lots of action um you know there's 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 always something happening you know the, the chapters are short and you can you can be guaranteed that something you know something interesting will happen in every chapter um but the disturbingness as i said i think for me at least and you know feel free to disagree with me for me at least comes as much from 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 layman himself and his constant replaying of his obsessions as it does from you know the the actual characters he's writing about if that makes sense um going back to this concept of of his books being like b movies um if you think about you know so i've talked about um you know hitchcock and, and de palmer and and, uh, and argento having you know women women in peril as a um, as a central theme of their work um if you think about um, you know those kind of eighties B movies, and I'm th talking particularly about slasher movies here, you know the the big thing that came out of slasher movies in terms of like critical theory basically was was the concept of the final girl. So the idea that you know you you watch these films and you know you do see um, you know women being stalked and murdered and things like that, but at the end of the film it's invariably a woman 
who survives, who you know, who who takes revenge on the um, on the killer. You know, she's the person who you know takes to, takes the axe to Jason or whatever at the end of the movie, um, and that somehow you know goes. It, it makes it a more interesting experience, shall we say, and a more balanced experience because whilst there are parts of those films that can feel a bit unsavoury in terms of the treatment of women, the fact that the woman comes out on top. Um, is you know is definitely in their favour. What I would say about Layman's books and and this you know in, in so taking this one as a as the most recent example that I've read, so it never feels like Jody as a character has the 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 strength that a final girl has, um, and I think this is often the case with Layman's books. Whilst they may have a central female character, that female character is often reliant on male characters to get her out of trouble. So she doesn't have the same agency and, and control of the situation um, as a as a, f- a final girl in, a, in an 80s slasher movie would have. And that, again, you know, just makes the books feel that bit more unsavoury. One other thing that was kind of interesting about this book is the fact that the, um, so the, the, the home invasion gang call themselves the Krolls. Um, and you discover in the book that they call themselves that because one of them read a, a like a paperback horror novel where there were some some monsters called the Krolls. Uh, but so they've taken the name from that. Now that book is in fact a Richard Lehman book. So there's a one of Lehman's early books, um, The Woods Are Dark, featured um, featured monsters called the Krolls. Um, so I, I found it quite interesting that he was being kind of self-referential in this book. Um, so yeah, that that was interesting. Um, aside from that, it's a you know it's definitely a suspenseful read. Um, it, you know, I, it kept me turn, turning the pages, um, and there is you know there is some real tension here, but also um, it just it just leaves a bad taste in the mouth, I think. And it and it's not like a you know, some of the disturbing books I've read recently have gone out of their way to be disturbing. So something like Hog by Samuel Delaney, which is definitely a lot more disturbing than this. They go out of their way to be disturbing, but you feel like they're being disturbing with a purpose. Whereas Layman's books, and, and this I think probably is his most disturbing of the, of the ones I've read, or the ones I remember, um, Layman's books are more akin to um, the kind of modern extreme horror subgenre, which kind of, um, you know, is kind of the, the child of Splatterpunk, if you like, um, in that they, they seem intent on showing you horrific things um, kind of for shits and giggles really rather than to make any any kind of point um and i'm not saying there's something that i'm not saying there's necessarily anything wrong with that um but as i say layman's work tends to leave a tends to leave a bit of a bad taste in my mouth okay time for a random book from the shelves today an author who has many similarities to to layman and was part of that splatterpunk movement as well um jack ketchum I think Jack Hampshire is a much better writer um, than Richard Lehman, and when he describes disturbing things, he does it with a purpose um, rather than doing it for entertainment value, like I think like I think Lehman does. So this is um, his first book off season, um, which is very graphic, very violent, um, very disturbing, and and definitely um, one I would recommend above Richard Lehman any day of the week. So I hope you found that interesting. Let me know if you've read Endless Night or other books by Richard Lehman. Let me know um, your views on him. Um, and as always, thanks very much for watching. I hope you're safe and well out there. I hope you're reading good stuff. And I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.